Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all glory, praise, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and much love, honors and blessings, salutations to the elect of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, the Sid Seer Akim and Akwat that believe on Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. All right. And that stand firmly with their integrity. All right, that exhibit good conduct and composure to the best of their ability while uh, maneuvering through a wicked and perverse generation and people, okay? This is Yaakov Wall, and what you see before you is the word agony. Uh, I want to actually incorporate this with the suffering of Yahweh Shai before and after. Um, really before you know the, the the mental state that he was in before he was crucified and killed or well murdered and then after you know pursuing to what we go through now today leading up to the you know the ultimate trials from Yahweh and Yahweh Shai to test to see to see if you know we are worthy of being elect because <clears throat> the same mental condition that we are going to be at or that we're in and are going to be in um, was the same situation that Yahweh Shai was in the entire time he was here on the earth and it shows in the scriptures that he was in agony all right in fact there's a scripture that shows that um, Yahweh Shai was tempted it says that he was tempted in all same manner as we were and that comes from um you know from Yahweh Shai and his past lives you know up until when he was here but the, he, he received a lot of that he felt a lot of the, the most when he was actually here and he, you know he was known as Yahweh Shai <clears throat> it says Hebrews 4 <clears throat> Excuse me. Hebrews 4 and 15 says, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And being tempted, going through temptation, uh, puts you in agony. Because you've got to encounter or in, endure certain situations. Now, Yahweh Shai's ultimate temptation that he had to go through was to be crucified. And, um, you know, the reason why I'm making this real quick, I want to point out, is because, um, you know, we just got done uh, acknowledging the solemn feast of the Passover, the Pesach. And during the Pesach, that was also during the same time that our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, was murdered okay and there's a scripture um let me see to, just to prove that he was killed on that during this time let me see let me go back up uh this is matthew chapter 26 and one it says and it came to pass when Yahweh shot had finished all these sayings he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the, of the Pesach, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. All right? That, there was a reason why, you know, well, the world refers to it as the, la or as the Last Supper, but that was the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Okay? You know, there's another scripture. I, it might be the same chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, I think it's, I can't remember what it's, um, it's in Matthew, but it called, uh, it's, it referred to as the day of preparation because I believe it was going to be the, the, uh, the, uh, I can't even remember. So like it, I don't, let me retract that statement because I know it's in Matthew, but it called it the day of preparation. But even, even the chief priests and scribes, we're trying to be careful to murder Yahweh Shai because they didn't want to do it on the Passover unless there was a riot. <laughs> but they they still went ahead anyways. And um, 
here's another thing, man, and I'm going to put this out just because, you know, I was reading this and I came across um, the betrayal of Judas. And the scriptures say to, to, to Judas, Yahweh I said, woe to that man for it would better if he had never been born. And I'm going to just say this, man, for every two third out there who sold out, who rejected this truth, this, this knowledge, for, for, for the little that you've sold out for, for the extreme irrelevance and base material things that you decided you want to follow and, and, and uh, you know, cutthroat after, hey man, you, you're, you're pathetic, okay? You're extremely pathetic, man, and you're vile. And, and you deserve every ounce of judgment in the form of destruction that's going to come to you because, um, let me see, you gave up for a little bit. Now, to Judas, just want to put him out. Um, Judas get, uh, sold out Yahweh Shai for 30 pieces of silver. I don't know how much that is today, but it ain't still ain't shit. It really isn't. And um, look, man, everything that Yahweh Shai went through was agonizing. You have right here. This is what I was looking for too. Uh, it's a lot of for you know putting that out. I just put it out because this entire chapter, man. And when you look at what happened to Yahweh Shai, man, it's very sorrowful. It's very, it, 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 uh, it you know, it. If I if I wasn't making this video, man, I'd be emo I'd be a lot more emotional. It, it's terrible what our people did to Yahweh Shai, and it's terrible what what happened to him. Okay, what be, what it was what was going on before and what was going on after, and Yahweh Shai knew all this, and this is why he was like this. This is why he was in agony. Because, uh, well, I'm re I'm gonna read this, then I'm gonna get the word Matthew twenty six and twenty two. Yahweh Shai said, and they were ex and they were exceeding sorrow. No, 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 that's not it. That's not it. Uh, it was when Yahweh Shai went to go pray. Um. Where is it? I just I just had it. Maybe it's a different book. Nope. It's in this book. He went to go pray in Gethsemane. And uh it said that he was exceeding he said it said that his soul was exceeding sorrowful. Right here. Yeah, Matthew 26 and 36. It says then he, then come and Yahweh shy with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with them Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which was James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Now why why did you I say that? This was prophecy. I mean, you gotta really put yourself in that situation and understand. Which you'll never be able to understand because you're not Yahweh Shai. But but like I'm gonna get into, there's gonna be a time where you're gonna be treated just like them, man. This because we're supposed to be co heirs with Yahweh Shai, right? The elect are co heirs, right? They're gonna inherit all things just like Yahweh Shai did. But Yahweh Shai and what we gotta go through, there was a specific protocol in order to receive it. And that was to be, you know, tried unto death. Okay? And Yahweh Shai was put to, through a trial up all the way until death. He had been murdered and he was tortured and tormented. All right. All laws and all process and procedures were omitted when Yahweh Shai was put to death. Okay. Just like today. There is no judgment in the goings of these people, man. The 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 the, uh, the process of law, the do or what they call it, the due process of law, don't even apply to Israelites. Okay, Esau does what he wants to do. Point is, the same thing happened back then. All right, but um, the reason why was he exceeding sorrowful, man? 
All right. Why was he? Why was he like like it says in Luke twenty two and forty four, and being in agony? All right. See, the scriptures. Every word that is in the scriptures has a perf a purpose, and not one single word in the scriptures uh, is put there, and that does not belong. It said that Yahweh Shai was in agony. All right, he was in agony, in so much that he exhibited something that was called hermitrido hermitri how do you say hermitridosis. Which, when you look in records or any history or yeah, any records, Yahweh Shai, who the world called Jesus Christ, was the only human being and man person to ever sweat or cry blood, uh, blood, tears of blood, sweat blood. And when you look into hermatidrosis, uh, it says that the only way that that can happen is by someone being under extreme stress, agonizing stress. Okay? Yahweh Shai was exceedingly sorrowful because he was about to have to encounter death. And he knew that he was going to have to remain faithful to it. That was the whole purpose of why he was sent. But it was to the point, he even prayed for it to, 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 for that cup to pass from him. He was so in such agony about knowing that he was about to be crucified that he prayed to Yahweh to let that judgment pass and not happen. So a lot of people think they can accept death when it comes to them or that they're ready to die. They can go out in a gunfight, this and that. But when you really are at that seat at that moment, your wits go in a spiral. You know, and, and um, this is not to speak down on Yahweh Shai at all in any means. This is just to show that even the greatest, biggest brother, the Lord of glory, the Prince of glory, the king of one of the king of all kings, even he was scared to death because there is a feeling behind death. It It, it, it hurts. <laughs> All right, it hurts. It, it's not just going to sleep and you know, just you know, oh, you know, I'll wake up in the kingdom and then you know, or you know, especially in the times that we've been in, since the time of Yahweh Shai, since before that, death has always been bitter and, and and has been bloody, gory, hurtful, and in this particular case, Yahweh Shai's death was agonizing. Now, when you go into the word agony, it says that it means to be in extreme physical or mental suffering. Was not Yahweh Shai an extreme physical suffering? And during that physical suffering, don't, do you not believe his mentality was suffering as well? Because he had his people betraying him. He had his people watching him, putting, up, putting him up disgracefully. All right. They, they put stakes through his hands, you know, through his feet. A, a bitch-ass centurion uh, sliced him on the side of the, uh, the stomach, you know. They, 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 they blasphemed him. They ridiculed him. They scoffed at him. They scorned him, okay, when he was carrying that post. Can you imagine the, the, the mentality of Yahweh Shai knowing that these bitch ass fucking two thirds, that's who it was, man. There wasn't no elect around Yahweh Shai while he was about to be crucified that was, uh, that was scoffing or trying to hurt him or, 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 or um, what do you call it? Like, like, um, what's that word? Like word mock him. I'll just say mock, making fun of him. It was all the rest of the two-thirds of Israel that was there at that time, you know, because not, not, not all two-thirds, you know, but all of the all of the chosen of destruction, the children of disobedience, all right, that were, that were despising and rejecting uh, Yahweh Shai. 
Like, could you imagine, really imagine what he was feeling? Because people don't consider, people don't ask questions. Well, why was he murdered? Why was he hit? Why was he spit on? Why were his own people talking shit to him? You know, why, uh, why was he taken basically to, uh, to, the, to the highest of, the judi of what you would call ju the judicial system today and put on trial? And even when the person who had power to say, all right, you're free to go, even when he said that he found no guilt in this man, he wasn't even let go. So this proves prophecy, man. You go into Isaiah 53. And I'll, I'm going to put at three. I'm going to start at verse three and jump down. It says he is despised and rejected of men. Who is he rejected from? Our, our people. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians. He was a man of sorrows. There was, I mean, shh, let's go out and preach right now, man. Well, let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about the list of sorrows that, of, of, of why Yahweh Shai was sorrowful and acquainted with grief. You could go on for days to talk about it. Why was he acquainted with grief? Because he knew his judgment. He knew the judgment he was going to have to deal with. He knew what he was going to have to uh, uh, had to endure up until that time as well with the people. All right. It says, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we, just, and we esteemed him not. Now, when you look at the word despised. All right. It says to feel, feel contempt or a deep repugnance for. So what it says right there, a detest and loathe. You hate. All right. So it says that he was basically he was hated and we esteemed him not. And, and this this is heavy because. To, to esteem someone means you regard and respect them. And, and, and we know that our people who the Lord is only dealing with is extremely guilty of not respecting and regarding Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai in any form or fashion. The scriptures say, man, our people are destroyed for this reason. And that the Lord has a problem with our people because of this of this reason. And, and I quote the scripture all the time. I love, I love the hell out of it, man. Moses said that he knew, he said, for surely do I know that after my departing, meaning once I'm, I have gone into the grave, you shall utterly corrupt yourselves, meaning you were going to fill yourself up with filth in every nook and cranny possible. So these are the same people that did not esteem Yahweh Shai and that despised him and that caused him grief. Okay? And then looking after what he did for our people, really what he did for the elect, but what he still did, knowing the attitude of Jake, he still pressed on to the purpose of why he was here. Okay? Um... Uh, now you jump down to verse 7 uh, Isaiah 53 and 7 It says he was oppressed And he was afflicted Alright Yet he opened down his mouth You know you had When he was uh, put on trial man And you know they, the, the chief priest the scribes Even Pilate they asked him Who art thou man He didn't say nothing but, I mean we don't know Everything that was said in that When he was behind those doors On trial Could you, could you imagine what You know was being said to him man or what there was, the 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 the, uh, the cackles and and the the hyenas, you know, crying and you know you know uh, the high voice yelling of you know you, you know what it could have been said you know fuck that man you know kill him he he needs to die, you know, bitch ass niggas man, is what our people are. I wish it was something worse to call them than that man, because. Our people are that. Our people are every derogatory, profane word that you can possibly call them. And especially, well, no, I'm not even going to get on that, man, but, you know. But yet he opened not his mouth. Yeah, I was shy, man, was in agony up until his death because he knew he was going to have to go through all this, man. The scriptures talk about, I actually may have it pulled up. 
Yep. Uh, this is Sirach 2 and 18 says, saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. Because when you are, when you fall into the hands of men, that's basically, that's the, that's the, that's the best gift an enemy can get. All right. To be able to do what they want to do to their enemy is the, is the biggest joy you can get. And that's what happened with Yahweh Shah, man. He was put into the hands of, of his enemies and his own enemies was his own people. Okay. Um, let me see. Where was I? Oh, yeah, right here. It said, uh, verse seven, he was oppressed and he was not, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears. Is, do, does a sheep have his way? Can a sheep stop himself from being, you know, slaughtered or sacrificed? Can it, does a sheep have any weapons at all to defend itself against an enemy or a band of wolves? No. That's what happened here with Yahweh Shai. Because when you look into verse 8, he was taken from judgment, man. No matter what he said, he was still going to be condemned to death. Again, when Pilate, Pilate said he found, no, he found no guilt in this man. He found nothing wrong with them. And they, even the people still said, does not fucking matter, crucify him. After, after finding no guilt in Yahweh Shai, man, the, the you nigga fucking people of Israel, man, still said, crucify him, kill him, kill him and let our blood, let our children's blood and our blood be upon our own heads because you wanted this man gone. Now, now Yahweh Shai said to Judas, woe unto that man who betrayeth me. And, and, and also there's a scripture where it says, woe unto, woe unto the hint. Woe unto the woe unto those whom offenses shall come to, I believe. If not, if, I, if I'm running, um, I'm wording it wrong, Salakia. But when it comes to offending Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, I mean, you have no idea what you've done, and and we cannot express the dire fuck up <laughs> of your actions. Okay, the only thing we can tell you to do is just to watch and then and, and basically um, witness because when the Lord comes back, when he comes back to judge every single person that did what they did back then and now staying on their lot of being a wicked ass Israelite, when he comes back to get your ass, man, you're going to you're going to be in agony as well. You're going to be. In an agonizing state, times and times a thousand, because you are paying for what you did to him. All right, you're paying for taking him and stripping him away from judgment, for falsely accusing the Lord of Glory. Which, when you go into, um, I'll go, I'll get it right here, uh, and when you go into First Corinthians. So lock it, let me get it. I think it's two, if not, it's three. Yeah, it's it's um first Corinthians two and seven, but we speak the wisdom of the most high in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which the most high ordained before the world unto our glory. It was a hidden, it was a hidden mystery. That Yahweh Shai was was the Lord. That he was with Yahweh. There was a whole uh, argument over that when he talked to the to the Pharisees, and he said that before Abraham he was. It was a mystery. It said which none of the princes of this world knew, and it's a and it was and it's a mystery now because that's why you still react the same way that you do. Two thousand twenty two years later. You still are that same mentality, man. You still are ignorant of who Yahweh Shah is. It says, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And had you known 
what you who you had done who you had crucified back then you would have you would have hella thought twice about doing what you did back then now you would have and and really <laughs> I, I dare you would say that it would be enough to make every one of you motherfuckers repent because <laughs> you would be in agony knowing that you sacrificed that you murdered Yahweh Shai and you would want to do everything in this time and beg him to not kill you for doing that but again this was a mystery this was hidden from you all right you crucified the Lord of glory man all right you know, like that man sound the weird I was gonna say my God boy you know because you have no idea what you did you really don't you people have no idea what you did okay and I mean th there's a day coming where you you will find out this lesson kind of went a different way it's really speaking more about the 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 uh, the terrible behavior that you people put on you how was shy but it was really to show why he was in agony all right because when you go back into the word i didn't read the last part the last part of agony too is also really good it says an extreme physical and mental suffering but it says the final stages of a difficult or painful death and that's another reason why yahweh shah was in agony there was a lot of things through the final stages of his approaching imminent death that he had to encounter and that's why he was in agony that's why he was in in the mental in mental straits. That's why he asked Yahweh Shai, man. He prayed to Yahweh Shai that he that Yahweh would pass or Salaka. What did I just say? Yahweh Shai prayed to Yahweh that he asked him to let that judgment pass. Basically, he asked, you know, Yahweh, if it if it be of your will, don't let me die. Don't let me die this way. Don't let me go through these things. And this is just to show that, you know, if even though our Lord felt the, felt the same attitude or not at the same, but if he felt the same things mentally, and he and even he got weak so much that he wished he could not go through it, then where do you think we stand in this time? When the Lord said that, he, well, I had it pulled up in First uh, Corinthians three and thirteen. I, where do you think you stand? If you haven't done all that you can do, you know, in in the times of where we're all going to be tested to see who's worthy of the, of the kingdom to come, where do you think you stand? Okay? Because that time is coming where it's going to be tried. It's going to show what type of person you were. It's going to show what type of person you've been since your entire existence. Since the time you were created as a spirit and put on this earth up until now. This day will declare it. First Corinthians 3 and 13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. All right, that day shall declare it. All right, now when you look at the word declare, all right, uh, it says to make plain, to make manifest. Uh, let's see. I like, well, really, I like the word where it says to make plain. But when you look in, uh, let's look in Google. Because to declare or to have a de declaration, there you go. It's, it comes with the more emphasis on it. It says to say something in a solemn and emphatic manner. <laughs> All right? All right? There's, so this day is going to be manifestly shown in a specific manner. All right? It's going to be openly declared, openly known what type of person you are and you better pray unto the ends of the earth of Yahweh Shai that he give you an enduring spirit because just like Yahweh Shai man if 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 Yahweh had not uh, kept Yahweh Shai in that purpose Yahweh Shai would have failed all right if Yahweh would not have been with Yahweh Shai to the very end, 
Yahweh Shai would have failed. And it is the same way with us, man. If Yahweh Shai, if Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shai are not with you until the very end, you're going to fail. Okay? And that is why it is extremely important to have faith. It is extremely important to do all that you can do until the very end. Because if you don't, if you don't take this thing seriously, the Lord is going to destroy you and you're going to fail. You're going to cop out. You're going to give up. And we, and, and I don't care who you are, man, you are going to go through it. And we, and, and, and right now, um, even right now, we all, these us men who are in this truth, who Lord willing are sincerely striving to the best of our abilities sincerely, every day we have small manners of, of, of defining trials. It's to, but it's because it's preparing us for the ultimate ones. When all, when all hell is broken loose, when martial law has been implemented, when the MOTB is on the rise and being uh, forced among the people and people are being killed up and down the street, this and that, all the seditions, the cannibalism, all that, those are going to be the defining, you know, declarating moments and trials while you live. And if you do not have Yahweh Yasha on your back protecting you when these times come, your ass is grass. And you better pray that you did not do something heinous against you how about Shemiah Shai because he's going to dispose of you very quickly and brothers have been having visions I, I ain't gonna lie I've been having visions but we've been having visions the brother has been having a lot hell of a lot of hell of visions uh, of bros you know things happening to brothers happening to family members man I've been I've been hearing the things happening to, to people that I care about happening to them and their families so it's getting real. It's been real. It's but but it's it's the the heat is turning up. Hey man, uh, Apostle Tahar called it the year of the turn up, man. So it's real, man. So you know, just you know, a little bit of admonishment and exhortation, man. You know, it was supposed to be about you know, ultimately showing you that Yahweh Shai. That we're no different from what he has to go through, man. The scriptures say the servant is not above the master. What Yahweh Shai went through, we're gonna have to go through. And with James and John, in fact, let me. Yeah, why not? Let's let's, let's get a scripture on it. Um, uh, let's see. I think that's how you spell it. It's in Matthew. Uh, Let me see. Um, I can't remember what. Let me see. I'll just type it on Google. <laughs> Sometimes, man, you gotta, you gotta type it. <laughs> I hate typing <laughs> uh, Jesus on here, man. But Google helps you. Let me see, uh, Matthew 20 and 20 said, then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children, which again, James and John, with her sons worshiping and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, what wilt thou? She saith unto him, grant that these two my sons may sit, the one in thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Yahweh Shai answered and said, "Ye know not what you ask." And this is something you got to tell yourself, man, because well, I mean, it's all about counting the cost. We got we you you have to instill, basically, sear that knowledge into your mind that you're gonna have to be tried. All right, you're gonna have to be tested, and you have to be prepared for the possibility for a very good possibility that it's gonna require physical contact. <laughs> It says, "Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall be that I shall drink of?" 
and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, because this was talking about the, the afflictions and trials. It says, they say unto him, we are able. It says, and he said unto them, you shall indeed, you shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptism. Or so like it. And so, um, let me read it again. And he said unto them, you shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left, it is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. So this is all just about like you're going to have to be tested, man. That day will be declared and that day is coming and that day will happen. And you have to prepare your heart for it because it's near. So, you know, that's really all I got to say. You know, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. I want to give all glory, present honor to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and much love, honors and blessings to the elect of Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai, which are going to endure and make it. All right, Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai, Barakatham, Kwam Yahshai Allah, Shalom.